The drab hamlet of Chiduso in Nyanga Division Lugazi does not offer anything spectacular. Its sleepy rhythms betray a piece of history. Idi Amin lived here with his mother, Mariam Ate. Amin's mother had moved here after leaving Kakira, where she worked as a cane cutter. This man, Ibrahim Chigozi, is a grandson of Ibrahim Bigalomwenda, who married Amin's mother. Records show that Amin was born on May 17, 1928, in a police barracks at the present day Serena International Conference Center in Kampala. But Amin's father, Nyavire Amin Dada, had abandoned him, alleging he was born out of wedlock, and his legitimate father was the Kabaka of Uganda, Dawdi Chwa. Ibrahim, who was a medicine man, came to fill this void. He educated Amin at Chiduso Umea Primary School. Amin moved to Semuto and later Bombo to live with his maternal uncle, Yusuf Ahmed, who took him to a madrasa to study Islam. It is here where he formed a bond with the Nubian community. He was staying among the Nubians, studying among the Nubians, growing among the Nubians. That was his first contact with the Nubian community and the soldiers because the in, uh, King's African Rifles headquarters was in Bombo. Amin was recruited later into the King's African Rifles in 1946 and taken to its 3rd Battalion in Nanyuki, Kenya. Here he became the colonialist ski hatchet man, purging Mau Mau nationalists in Kenya who were fighting the British. By the time Uganda acquired independence, Idi Amin was one of the most senior officers in rank from the King African Rifles. Blindingly loyal to Obote, he was rewarded with a coveted post of deputy commander. On May 26, 1966, Amin rolled tanks to the Lubiri as Kabaka Mutesa, who was then president, fled to exile. This was after Bote had earlier on April 15, 1966, stationed tanks in parliament to pass the Pigeon Hall constitution where he declared all powers were vested in him. An assassination attempt on Obote in 1969 at Lugogo and the death of a popular officer, Brigadier Perinio Okoya and his wife in Gulu, placed Amin in a place of discomfort. Ismail Karim, who is the Secretary General of the Nubian Community, reveals that there were plans to arrest Amin upon his return from Egypt over Okoya's death. But somehow this man, he had his, uh, his networks. They told him of what was happening. He came two weeks earlier. Kasim Ramadan, the governor for Masaka, during Amini's government, reveals that it is suspicion that informed officers of largely the Kakwa and Nubian ethnicity to plan the coup. Obote had traveled to Singapore for the Commonwealth Summit. <laughs> Kasim says he played a key role during the coup, largely orchestrated by the malaria mechanized specialized reconnaissance regiment in Lubiri, which fell in the hands of the coup plotters. Upon capturing power, Amin ruled for nine years in what many historians refer to as a reign of terror. Many high-profile figures, including the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, Janan Lu, the Chief Justice Benedicto Chiwanuka, Bank of Uganda Governor Joseph Mubiru, Makai University Vice-Chancellor Frank Kalimuzo, and a host of ministers were killed. But this was never proven. Dad collected the son and the sisters and they drove all the way to Busembachi and they found a funeral fire with the mournful gathering of his relatives from the maternal side. The grandfather sees a spitting image of his great-great-grandfather, great-grandfather, and they checked, they checked. You, you know how they, children have injuries mm -hmm. that are uh, very well known by, let's say, the nanny. There was one called... Uh, 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 one, one, one lady who knew the child so well, she came and checked for those discerning scars and said, no, but this is Moses. 
Grace Sibingira, a former Bote One minister, described Amini's character as a combination of guile, buffoonery, and utter ruthlessness in killing anyone, even remotely suspected by him or his subordinates, of being unfriendly. In 1972, he expelled the Asians and handed some of their properties to indigenous allies, tapping into the psyche of nationalism. Four years later, he got sucked into the Israel-Palestine conflict when he allowed hijackers land an Air France plane carrying largely Israeli passengers. Israel sent commandos to rescue the passengers in one of the most daring rescue missions which left many Ugandan troops dead. On October 9, 1978, one of Amin's erratic officers Lieutenant Colonel Juma Butabika, who was the commander of the Malire Mechanized Specialized Reconnaissance Regiment, sent his officers to Tanzania after a Ugandan army officer was beaten during a bar fight inside the neighboring state. <laughs> Once in Tanzania, Butabika captured Kagera, and when the neighboring state retaliated, it culminated into the fall of Idi Amin's government on April 11, 1979. But long after he's gone, he's both reviled and revered. For those who lost loved ones at the hands of security personnel, Amin was capricious, impulsive and violent, but to his admirers, he was a leader who had awakened national consciousness. Emmanuel Mutaizewa, NTV.